Hello, I'm Prime Palindrome, and today we're drawing bugs. And this is an example of a bug. I got this from... It's a beetle. I got this from my mom. And people used to wear them on their clothes. Did you know that? It's a long time ago. But it's better to not do that. And maybe just eat them instead. Or draw them. Or keep them as pets. Um, I have three drawings I want to show you that I did as a practice to find texture and just to train my eye in following a reference so enjoy here i am blocking in the shape of the ant i'm also following a through line i see in the design i'm trying to work more with flow and direction lines as always with the reference i work with the negative space i see it's outlined in red here most of the time and I started with an ant in grayscale more as a warm-up, as to not be distracted by the color. Immediately when I added the shadow underneath, it became more real, more grounded in reality. It shows you how important they are. After blocking in with a square brush, I primarily work with a soft, rounded brush, because the ant is so shiny. I find I work best with those brushes to create that effect. This is the second sketch phase. I draw in the details with a sharp brush and then I blend them by smudging. I used to not smudge enough. Um, thanks Easter Break for your latest tutorial video. Always something to learn. There was a decision to make about how I wanted to interpret that hind leg. I didn't want to make it stand out that much, so I kept it fairly undetailed to minimize its importance in the composition. A nice thing to do here is to adjust the contrast. I opted here to make the end stand out from the page. You might have noticed the background is grey. In my drawing I abhor white backgrounds. They hurt the eyes. And this way I get to decide where the brightest spot goes in the end. I cleaned up the shape with a hard eraser just to make it neat and tidy. Then I refined the outer limbs and feelers. Then there wasn't much to do. I was eager to move on to a more challenging piece. Here we are! Mr. Ant. I like how he turned out. This was a good warm-up. This is what I'm talking about. A beetle. Now this is a challenge. A symphony of many parts. I picked the color from the reference and I am exploring the shapes. This will take a while. And it did. Um, ignore the sparkly magical bag in the left down corner. I created a sketch in the red base color to make it easier to work into the artwork. I did however paint that on the background, which dampened my morale a little, so I desaturated it and painted over it. With color you are instantly faced with more difficulties. You're not only thinking about shape, but now you're entering into the world of color theory, which is a vast and mysterious place. I mostly chose colors that were cooler for the shadows. This means they lean more towards blue instead of yellow. Now I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, stay away from orange is what I told myself here. That will be reserved for the highlights. I think everybody develops a kind of shorthand. Colors are more emotional than science-based, in my opinion. Here I am always taking the background color and I'm adding it onto the beetle. This makes it seem like it actually lives there. I zoom out to get a look at how correct I am about the shape likeness. Not very much, so I adjusted it with the warp tool. Also the liquify function. If you don't have those, you can erase or add with paint. Maybe step away for a bit and come back with fresh eyes to see mistakes better. It really started to look like a beetle here. I was constantly thinking about how to make it look 3D, adding highlights and shadow to mimic form. What I like about beetles is how strong they are. If you've ever held one in your hands, you'll notice the strength they have in their tiny legs. Their determination. They're also shiny and good for farm study practice. This is where the work really begins. It's a marathon to keep adding and subtracting, to look at the reference and to find a texture representative for that with your brush. A practice like this makes your hands remember how to paint when it matters. A simple beetling may one day become the armor of your elf character. It's like a sword. It's very worthwhile, plus you get a cool beetle artwork at the end. I demonstrated on screen in pink how I'm trying to see the shape behind the reference. It's a good thing to be able to do. Even better would be to draw this again without the reference to see what you remember, but I recommend a simpler form for that. Perhaps the end from the beginning. Here I discovered a nice texture for the legs, just a simple line where I erase parts of it to make it look like those little joints. You find these things while drawing, that's how you develop a style, I think, coming up with interpretation and solution to problems. Draw and become better at drawing. 
Now it's time to render the head. I used abstract shapes and later added life to that with highlights. It's my favorite part. And this is where I wanted the focus to go. So I gave it some personality and I detailed here the most. There were subtle markings on this beetle's shell and I experimented here to represent it to my liking. But more important were those comb-like structures on its legs. I felt there was a lot of texture knowledge to get from there. I called this beetle Lenjamin because it's fun and it humanizes what you're working on. Measuring lines were a great help to me here. There is a lot of symmetry in bugs and this beetle was no exception. Um, I think it helps train the eye. If you're paying attention to it in practice, you'll do that automatically down the road for other projects. I had to clean up the piece here. I do that systematically throughout the work to see what I still need to adjust better. It's also really satisfying to see your work become a better version of itself. I mostly use the eraser or the brush with the background color on it. This is where I used uh, a color adjustment layer. I selected the darker reds and made them more blue, as was the plan from the beginning. It instantly makes for a pleasing effect. It's up to you what counts as pleasing in your work. Also, it was time to put up my cleanup grid. As, the, as it was becoming quite strenuous to keep working on this. If you've seen my other art videos, you know I use this to focus my attention, keeping to one square at the time. I really got the chance to play with texture here. Um, I used a hard brush and added highlights in a stippling way. There was, however, a lot of refining still to do. And even though this was mostly just for practice, I like to keep the standard high. A few it guards against me uh, becoming lazy in the future. On screen, you can see some 3D shapes I kept drawing for Chet. It's to understand the underlying shape and how to light that thing, I told them. <laughs> it was important that I kept an eye what thing was in front of the other thing and shaded that way. Um, it shouldn't feel like a sticker, is what I mean. More cleanup. It's important to keep yourself motivated while drawing and you know there are still some ways to go. Think about the end result in your mind, like when you can see the end destination of your journey in the distance. Just a little further, just a few more steps. On the other side of that statement is that this is just a smaller step on a bigger journey. Don't overwork something either. It's difficult for me to find a balance sometimes. I want the mileage and I invest time in art, but I won't let the weight of a single artwork drag me down. Sometimes done is better than perfect, you know? Look at where the wings meet up in the middle, that small triangle shape. I never would have noticed that in an insect if I hadn't taken the time to observe it. It's astounding the amount of detail these tiny creatures have. They are amazing. I still don't want them on me most of the time or invading my house. Best to draw them and admire them from afar. I muddied up the wing color a bit. I think that is because I tried to blend that cool blue color onto the warm red. I'm still working on my understanding of how color works here. But I noticed it, and if you notice your mistake, you're halfway there to fixing it, ideally. Adding those fun details on the hind legs. Um, in insect studies, you do get away with a lot, honestly. I could add spikes or keep them out. Your ordinary person won't object. That makes the, uh, it takes the pressure out of the end result, and that is pleasant. This is the end stretch. I felt I was almost done here, just some final touches, and I am going to copy one leg and paste it onto the other side, then render it there to give it individuality. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Liquify to correct asymmetry. You can see where I erased it to brush by painting the background color. Not ideal if you're used to working with more layers. You'll see those and hate them, the painting of the background color. But it suits my style, mostly. I'm flipping the canvas with a shortcut key and then I'm cleaning up some stray bits here and there. Really the final stretch of the thing. <laughs> I hope. No, I know. And it was worth it. Um, you'll see. You'll see in a bit. Zooming out to get a look at the whole thing and then I merged everything onto one layer because of the paint residue from erasing with a brush. Then I color adjusted it and... Like, I'd like to do that with every work, just to get a cohesive look, so that it looks like everything belongs together. These touch-up really help make your work look more professional, I think. I feel a lot of joy at the end of a work like this, and I try to sprinkle that in with little details. Won't let them become too much, though. Um, here we are at the finished artwork, a beautiful beetle. Moving right along to the one that was the most fun. This is where I discovered a new tool, the mirror function, and wow, that was a discovery all right. I should have seen it. 
Yeah, the symbol for the tool is even a butterfly. I did go on with the normal sketch approach after this and the power of the tool really confused me. I had to put it aside to let it work in. Here I blocked in the colors with a square brush like I usually do and I added the la major landmarks of the creature. Just look at that skull, it's amazing. This is a death's head hawk moth and my new favorite animal. I think it's a good thing to have a favorite animal and color. If anything, it makes it easier to decorate and accessorize. I was plodding along, copying the reference, admiring this awesome looking animal, but the urge to use this new function soon crept up. I was already quite tired from live drawing this on stream and maybe a, a bit of mania had settled in. Um, I still had to add those shadows as they were not symmetrical. And the shadows were actually quite beautiful with different levels of intensity and quite smooth looking. I'm not an advocate of letting tools do the work for you. There is a thrill in achieving something on your own, but they should not be shunned either. It's progress and progress is going to happen and it's always good to be a part of it and experience it. Here I noticed I was not achieving symmetry and that is what a successful butterfly design lives off. It was time. So I set up the grid for the mirror tool and I was flying. Everything I drew on one side instantly appeared on the other. I couldn't believe how satisfying it was. Just creation. Look, mom, I'm drawing with two hands and it's good. I felt like this was a Rorschach test, this skull. Things appeared that I did not intend, but that were exactly what I needed. It was a rush. I was laughing out loud while doing this, like some kind of weird scientist. I cannot recommend you do this enough. Go on. Get a reference of a butterfly or a moth and go be free have fun i understand coloring books now i get it yes well and then i turned it back off and cleaned up the edges my hands were actually quite shaking at this point i'd been drawing for three and a half hours and the adrenaline rush of discovery and play quite drained me so i adjusted the saturation and contrast and i said goodbye to my stream i was done and very happy this is the moth. Hey, moth. <laughs> nature has so much beauty in it, and you are a part of nature too. And beautiful. Imagine what you'd look like to an insect, some kind of god. Possibly. I hope that was useful for you. I certainly had a lot of fun. The, the last one was the most fun. That was just, what? I discovered a new technique that I haven't uh, worked with before. So I hope this was useful, and see you next time. Bye.